Hey, what's happening? Paul Ingram here with Collie Center, and today we're taking a look at how to improve your free flow, how to improve your Carenza, your Saya, your free flow within your Filipino martial arts practice. If you're feeling a little choppy in your flow, maybe you feel like you're getting stuck, maybe you're hitting some mental barriers or some physical barriers, let's go ahead and uh, try to solve that right now today. Before we kick into it, please do me a quick favor. Number one, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel because only a third of our viewers are actually subscribed. So there's a 66% chance that you're not subscribed even though you're watching this. Hit the thumbs up button and also in the comments below, let me know on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, where would you put yourself in your free flow? How would you rate yourself? And hopefully that the tips I'm gonna share with you today are gonna help you bump up a few numbers. Let's grab our gear and let's go ahead and train. In most martial arts, you have what's called forms, or kata. And it's a very strict discipline movements, right, where you're learning these certain movements, okay? And you're going through these patterns, and you're learning techniques. And this is very important training, and we do have this in some of the different styles and systems of Filipino martial arts, right? Like when I was training in the Pekiti Tertia days, you know, we have these short forms that are teaching methods, or teaching principles, they're teaching tactics, and then you can move that into the partner drills and then move that into the actual tactical applications. But in Filipino martial arts, we also have a high, high emphasis on the free flow, on the ability to just move and express the weapon freely and some styles will call this Carenza, other styles will call this Saya, right? The terminology may vary, but the emphasis on being able to free flow with the weapons, whether it's single stick, double stick, knife, doesn't matter, it's a very high emphasis in that ability in Filipino martial arts. Now, a lot of people kind of get stuck here and they start feeling like, you know, they're like, man, I, I don't have good flow. I feel like I'm choppy. I feel like I keep repeating the same movements over and over again, right? Maybe their vocabulary of techniques and skill, they feel like is, is lacking. And a lot of people just feel like they're getting stuck, right? Maybe they, they're getting stuck like with mental blocks. They can't figure out what it is, but they see these, uh, these you know, beautiful performances in the Karenza and the free flow from all these you know talented gurus and stuff and then they feel like man but my Karenza it sucks so hopefully we can help you out here right now now the biggest thing is if you don't know let's let's take like a florete okay when we take a look at the florete if you don't know how to actually execute a florete well then you need to spend time drilling that and building the coordination of the florete and an understanding of the florete. So if you don't have that basic coordination already down, you're not gonna feel good applying it in your, into your Carenza. And it's not gonna look good because you just don't have the fluidity of that movement yet. So you need to spend time developing that technical skill. On the other side of it is, a lot of times people try to bite off more than they can chew. So limit your movements. Give yourself a limit of movements of drills and focus on the transition between those drills and between those movements. Because the key to fluidity with the weapon isn't the actual strike itself. You know, most people have very good and very beautiful strikes. It's the transition between strikes where it stumps most people. So I could do an angle one and then a number two florete you know, and uh, I can move around with that, but if I don't understand how these movements transition, then it's not gonna feel good, it's not gonna look good in the free flow. So here's my suggestion, all right? You could try this out, try this for like a month, but just take three drills, and I'm gonna give you guys the three basic drills I start all of my students on when we're focusing on building their Carenza on their free flow, but just take three drills and limit your movements to those three drills and focus on the transitions, okay? So here's what I mean by it. We're gonna take three drills today. We have very basic drills. We have the downward X, which is our angle one and our angle two. You're just gonna make a big X right here, right in front of your body, just like this, okay? And just take a minute and just move around with it. You know, it's kind of Carenza when you start, you know, moving around, changing directions freely, but you're isolating these movements okay, and you're working that transition between your one to two and your two to one. 
Then you have the second drill, which is your upward figure eight. And this is where, now we're gonna go ahead and work on the upward strikes. All right, you can do this with full slashes. You can do this with smaller slashes. So already you have variety that you can start to play with, okay? Within, just in this one isolated practice. Building that coordination, challenging your coordination, but at the same time, you're working those transitions from your ascending strikes. The third drill that I wanna focus on right now that's great for beginning your Carenza, or if you needed to take a step back to work on developing the flow, is our plus. And this is where we're gonna work on our horizontal and our vertical movements. A horizontal and a vertical movement. And again, just take a minute, a little round, and just work on that transition between horizontal and vertical. You can work on going back and forth with your horizontal strikes, okay? And then plug in a vertical. You can come upwards on the verticals if you like. Okay, but you're just basically drawing pluses in front of your body. And you're gonna spend time with this drill and just kind of Carenza this drill. One drill, you're limiting your movements, limiting your options that you can do with the weapon. What does this do? This takes away the overwhelming thinking or the overwhelming feeling that you need to integrate all these other more advanced manipulations and things like that into this free flow. And when you limit your options, you start to force yourself to have to build ingenuity within this limitation. So now we can take these three drills and we're just going to build Carenza pulling out of these three drills. So we can start off, just strike down the X a little bit and then move up the X. And come back down the X. And back up the X into the plus. All right, complete the plus, go back up the X. Back into the plus. Back down the X. You know, just change your directions. But don't focus on which way you're facing necessarily right now. Just focus on how do I get from an upward figure eight to the downward figure eight. Okay. How do I get from the downward figure eight to the horizontal and vertical strikes of the plus? And then going upward figure eight. And now you're, since you're limiting what you can do with the weapon, it allows you more time to figure out how to make those transitions. Okay, if I wanted to say I'm, I'm practicing the florete, and I wanna begin incorporating florete into my free flow, I'll do the same thing, okay? I'm gonna just break down, let's say an X and upward figure eight and a florete is one and two, which is an X but utilizing the florete, okay? So now I just move with my downward and then I go into the florete and then I'll go up the X. Okay, now how do I go from up the X back into my floretes? Maybe I come here. Florete to up the X. Okay. Then you can, once you have some good flow, then you can start to incorporate those horizontal strikes and then back into the floretes. So you're gradually building your flow. There's no way that you're gonna be able to start from knowing little to nothing, and then just all of a sudden have this great flow. Limit what you can do, okay? And focus on the transitions. How do you get from one drill, one set pattern of movements, to the next set pattern of movements, okay? And just focus on two or three drills at a time. Once you are noticing that you have a difference in this, this is why it's good to video yourself. You don't have to share those videos publicly, but you do want to kind of see yourself from that third person perspective. So now you can kind of start rating, okay, this is where I'm doing well. 
These are the transitions that I'm kind of getting stuck on or are still a little bit choppy. And then you go back and you create a drill out of that and you work it. So if I'm having a hard time or I'm feeling like you know, I'm going one, two, three, two floretti and from this three to my two floretti is feeling choppy, you create a drill out of that, right? So now I create that drill, one, two, three, and florete. One, two, three, and florete. And this becomes the drill so I can work on that specific transition that I'm feeling I'm not performing as well as I could or should be. Okay, and then as that's improving, now I go back to my fundamental drills, but that becomes drill number three. So now I go down the X, then I can come back up the X, and now I go into my third drill. Okay, back up the X, back into my third drill, down the X. Now I'm gonna cut that drill in half. Three florete, three, two florete, three, two florete. And I keep coming back to that cognitively, making that decision to keep coming back to that within the free flow, but adding the smoothness of that transition that I'm developing from the drill that I built for myself. If you work this tip and you take this exact same principle and apply this to your double sticks, your knife, your spear, your staff, your empty hands, you're gonna find that this training methodology right here to build your solitary free flow, it's gonna to start to improve your score that you're uh, giving yourself, right? So if you gave yourself in the comments below like a two out of 10, now I would say you're feeling pretty uh, not really confident about your free flow, try this method for a month even if you're just kind of cycling through the same you know six drills but you're just picking three to work on at a time then probably within a couple of weeks or maybe even a week you're gonna start feeling like you could bump that up to like a three or a four when you need to integrate a brand new movement a movement that you've just started you know and, and you want to integrate that into your Carenza into your free flow spend time drilling that and isolating it and then building the transitions just like I showed you in this lesson today. Let me know in the comments if you find this useful. Maybe uh, this is something that you've actually discovered maybe on your own or somebody else kind of shared with you. Maybe something similar. Let me know. I'd love to hear your feedback and uh, get on out there. Go train. You know, my, my last tip would be don't take it super seriously because the more that you're practicing, the more that you're focusing on building those transitions, you're going to get better and better. If you're not training, if you're not putting the time into it, well then obviously your flow is not gonna get better. Those transitions are not be gonna become more seamless because they don't have the option to, right? They don't have the opportunity to. So make sure you're training, that's the biggest thing. Don't beat yourself up too much, you know, part of the journey of Kali is, you know, frustration is going to happen and sometimes we're going to get down on ourselves and feel like we're not performing, you know, as good as somebody else. But this is why it's important to uh, film yourself and this is actually one of the reasons I started the YouTube channel so that I could see myself moving. You don't have to share that stuff publicly, but it is a good idea because, hey, if it doesn't get measured and if there's no way to measure it, then it doesn't get managed. All right, so make sure that you are you know, using the tools that we have available to us today, like cameras, and, uh, and use that. Okay, use that to your advantage so that way we can get those scores up. All right? Everybody at some point should feel like they're like at least an 8 out of a 10, I, you know, I, I believe. All right? And you can do it. It's achievable. If you like this lesson, if you're enjoying the way that I'm teaching, if you're getting a lot of benefit out of it, then head over to collicenter.com and go check out our online training that we have over at our online school, our DVD downloads. And I think you're going to really, really benefit from the training that we have over there because we go a lot more detail into the art of Kali and how we teach it here at Kali Center. If you need any uh, gear, if you need rattan sticks, if you need a staff, some training knives, head over to our store. You can also access that over at KaliCenter.com. I have the links down in the description below. And uh, most importantly, get outside and go let nature be your dojo. And uh, that's going to also help you out in enhancing your flow as well in your overall Kali performance. All right. I'll see you guys back here next time. Get out there, go swing, and go have some fun.